Leroy looked over his prize in glee. He'd ordered the box ages ago, and only yesterday had it actually come in. But, now that it had come in, he'd already called a friend over and was eager to get the party started. Well, just a party of two him and his friend. But it was his favorite kind of party at least the costume party. He carried the box to the living room, setting it on the table in front of the sofa, and sat, waiting. He'd already examined the contents, and so now all he had to do was wait for his friend. She was usually late, so he told her to arrive earlier than he really wanted her meaning she'd probably arrive late to what he said, but earlier than she would if she knew the proper time. Ding dong. Finally, Leroy thought, the clock had been getting close to the real time for the meeting, he was wondering if she was going to be that late, but nope, she was, in fact, just barely early for their costume party. Ah, welcome Ashling, took you long enough. Leroy chuckled, the flustered last slipping into his house, Eyes down. Sorry I was late. Had to do stuff. Took a while, you know. She mumbled, embarrassed at being late as usual. But Leroy didn't mind. He'd planned for it. Don't worry. Make yourself comfortable. I've got something to show you. Leroy said, waving her into the living room. She sat down, looking at the box curiously. So, what did you get? Ashling asked. Leroy simply smiling, walking over to the box and pulling out the costume inside. At first glimpse, all one could tell was that it was blue. A few more seconds of examination revealed that the majority was covered in shiny latex, with the hands and head free. The hands, head, and tail were all covered in blue fur, with white on the middle of the face and the tip of the tail. Leroy set the head down on the table, the fursuit head staring up at Ashling. The face was familiar, but furry wouldn't recognize her. A crystal costume? She asked, picking the head up and looking at it. The make was quite incredible. This had to be an expensive suit. It's beautiful. Leroy grinned proudly, taking the head back from his friend. Just wait until you see it on me, he said with a wink, heading off to an adjacent room and stripping down. Once he was bare, he stepped into the costume, feeling the warm fabric against his feet. It was so soft, and yet a little slick. All the easier to put the costume on. He loved wearing costumes, loved how they felt on him, but there was something he loved a little more than just wearing costumes, but that came later. First he had to put it all on. The legs clung to his legs, padding and extra tightness already in place in the suit so that, as his lower half was clad in crystal skin tight clothing, Leroy's calves seemed fit and his thighs thick, giving him quite the shapely form. Once the rump was covered, he had to admit it looked flawless. The long, fluffy tail draping over it, emphasizing its perfect curvature. He smiled to himself as he slid his arms into the sleeves. Like the legs, the fabric inside was pleasant and slick, making them quite easy to put on. He wiggled his fingers into the glove, watching as at first the whole glove moved, then just the fingers as he fit them in properly. He adjusted the foam breasts on his chest making sure they were nice and even. Too bad I can't keep these, he thought idly. He thought they looked rather good on him. That left only part of his costume left her head. He walked back into the room, showing off his lovely costume body to his guest. Whoa, that looks incredible. She said in awe, watching Leroy's face disappear under the fursuit, her last glimpse of him being a playful wink. Just wait until it's completed, he said lightly adjusting the headpiece until it was perfectly on. Now, for his favorite part, a small electric jolt ran through his entire body, making him quiver with delight. He could feel it happening already. All over his body, flesh and fabric began to merge, the fabric gaining life as it did so. Plastic fiber fur turned to protein filaments, fitting into his skin, and compressing underneath the tight, yet breathable and very flexible suit. He stretched, testing out the suit and no matter how he stretched it, never tugged or felt uncomfortable. This was a pretty top-tier outfit. The tail behind him began to swish and sway, the wire in the middle turning to bone, surrounded by flesh, with lots of fluffy fur surrounding it, bound by two ribbons for aesthetic. And underneath it all, he was still changing, his gloved hands the first thing he could actually watch. He got to see the fake fur become real fur, the paw pads plump up a little, the claws tipping the gloves becoming slightly translucent compared to the opaque white plastic they were before. 
His innards changed too, matching the form of the costume he wore, turning him from a human male into a curvy vulpine female. Her face began to push out, smooshing into her mask, merging into the new shape, the smile of the mask starting to move as the full lips became her lips. So, what do you think? Leroy asked, her voice starting to lighten up from her previous voice to sound like the vixen herself. I think I look quite good. If she quoted the game and Ashling's eyes were closed, she wouldn't be able to tell the real thing from Leroy. That's incredible. It's amazing. Ashling cried out, standing up, tugging a bit at Leroy's hand, checking under the costume, shocked to find no seams, no give, nothing. There was no more costume anymore. The costume had become Leroy, or Leroy had become the costume, become Crystal. I'm glad you like it, Leroy purred, stroking Ashling's cheek, looking into her stormy grey eyes. I was thinking of perhaps staying like this for a long time. Oh oh, yeah, that'd be nice. Ashling nodded, rather enjoying the look of Leroy, Crystal. She was such a pretty fox. But, perhaps I shouldn't have all the fun? She offered, a cute girl like you. I think we could find something for you too. She petted Ashling, watching the human practically melt under the kind affection. Something for me, Leroy. Ashling asked, looking a little awestruck by her friend's new form. Leroy chuckled. Please, call me Crystal, cutie. She turned to the box, opening it up again, and pulling out the next costume, and you'll be even cuter soon. Me? You dot 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 you got me a costume too? Ashling squeaked covering her face in her hands, trying to hide her blush. Crystal's strong, soft hands gently pulled Ashling's hands away from her face, gently stroking the human's long hair away from her bespectacled eyes. Of course, I thought you'd like it, cutie, Crystal cooed, Ashling practically hypnotized by the tall vixen. Go on, strip down and put it on for me, wouldn't you, my pretty little vixen? Ashling giggled. Crystal's words rather effective against her. Despite her normal shyness, Ashling bared herself for her friend, the two of them working together to dress Ashling up. Whereas Crystal's costume was quite skin tight and feminine, Ashling's was far less so. Big, metal boots, an olive green jumpsuit, a nice, beige vest, and black gloves, while the revealed body was coated in caramel fur. It didn't take a genius to realize who she was being dressed up as. I I love it, Ashling said, rubbing her glove-clad hands over her costumed body. A and I'll become just like you too? Crystal nodded. You'll be so cute once you're changed. She giggled, pulling out the headpiece and setting it on Ashling's head. She kept petting her friend's head. Just relax, and enjoy. Ashling cooed. Feeling the electric jolt run through her too. Her head started the change first, the opposite of Crystal's change. Her ears wiggling happily as they became real. A fact which Crystal took advantage of by scratching behind them, watching the still mostly human girl's leg which, just like a dog. Mmm, it feels good. Ashling cooed, her mask starting to become part of her face, or perhaps vice versa. When I blinking, while the other still remained plastic for a few more moments, giving her a silly, lopsided look. It didn't last long as the change progressed, Crystal's hands following it, Ashling's already small breasts shrinking down into fit, toned muscles under her combat uniform. Whereas Leroy had grown curvier and softer with her change, Ashling was doing the opposite. Her weight was shifting from fat to muscle, from a bit of a bigger girl to a lean badass fighter pilot. Of course, that wasn't all that was changing, as just like Leroy had when she became Crystal, she was becoming a he, and a rather fit one. Still cute, Crystal said, stroking Ashling's soft fur, pulling off the headset and tossing it onto the couch. You're still just a cute fox, no matter what. She cooed, watching as the fake tail became real symbolized best by it beginning to wag from the attention she was giving to the new fox boy. Still cute, Ashling, no, Fox McCloud, replied, his voice, just like Crystal's, identical to the real characters. Crystal nodded, petting her adorable fox pal. It'd be pretty cute if you took me out, perhaps dinner, just the two of us? She added in, taking hold of Fox's hand, such a cute boy, treating his vixen sweetly. Why yeah, I mean a broken bar fox shook his head, 
Double you wanna go out for dinner, my lady? Fox smiled, sharp fangs showing in the loveliest smile he could. Crystal nodded, the two walking out into the warm afternoon together. Crystal could end the transformation at any time. The reversing device was in the box, but perhaps when they got home after dinner Crystal could all lose the device for a few days, or weeks. Both of them seemed quite happy with their forms, neither would mind enjoying a week or four in their new forms, their new lives.